So I've got a mixture of slides today. Some of the slides are ones that the university has given me that will go through, that will go through for everybody. Um, and then I've got some that are specific for clean rehab at the end. The big message is, of course, welcome. Welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah. Um, and particularly welcome to Clean Rehab. So yes, I'm Heather, my email address is there, but it's all over the place. Feel free to email me whenever you need, like you already have, um, and get in touch if you've got questions at any time. This is what we call orientation week. Did your universities back home have an orientation week? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you can really look at the concept, it's this kind of like, get to know your week, teaching hasn't started, but let's you know, find your way around so it's not all so new next week when you come back. Before I go any further, I'd like to do an acknowledgement of country and acknowledge that we meet today on Ghana land. Um, you'll hear the word Ghana Yata, which means uh, Ghana country. And we say the word Ghana, but what's often really confusing to some of my international <laughs> students is that it's this word that's spelt with a K. So we say Ghana, but it's, this is how you spell it, K-A-U-R-N-A. -A. Oh. Yeah, so this is, these are the traditional owners, the Aboriginal people who lived on these lands um, before us, so we acknowledge them. I'm just going to turn that off because I realise it's playing my recording rather than... actually going through... Oh, my. I recorded a version of this yesterday to put online for the online students. So although you, you feel small because you're the only ones here, the majority of our students are learning online. So they're Australian healthcare professionals all around Australia. Um, they'll introduce themselves to you online. And they will study after hours, on weekends. They're still doing the same work, watching the same resources, doing all the same things. But just because they're not sitting here, it's hard <laughs> to imagine them. But you can imagine this, this class full, but just there yeah. in Sydney and Melbourne and Brisbane and yeah, not here. Um, so they want us to talk about essentials first. Um, Wi-Fi. Have you sorted out how to get onto the university Wi-Fi yet? Yeah. yeah. Oh. I'll, I'll skip <laughs> over this then. Um, you, the one thing I will say is you will find we call it EDU Room or EDU R O A M networks Quite around Australia. In any um, tertiary education institution, will have the same network, and you can log on at other universities throughout Australia as well. And indeed, a lot of countries throughout the world have also signed up to the same educational network. So, but if you've already sorted that, I won't talk about that anymore. Um, if you figured out how to enrol and register for classes, you've got your enrolment sorted? Yes. Cool. I will talk to you about yours later, yeah. but we can skip over that. Have you done your student ID card? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love teaching post grads. <laughs> <laughs> so organised. Skip through, skip through, skip through. All right. Um, have you looked at flow yet? Yeah. Yeah. So flow, we call it flow. It stands for Flinders Learning Online, and that's our sort of online learning management system. Um, we use a product called Canvas for that, so you'll sometimes hear us talk about Canvas or Flow, it means the same thing. Um, Canvas is relatively new for us here at Flinders, so if you hear us, if there's something broken about a topic site, like a link that doesn't work or something that doesn't look right, just let us know and we'll pull it out. We've had to roll all the topic sites over. I'd like to say they were all perfect, but they're not quite. There's a, there's, there, if you find a broken link, just let us know and we can sort it out. Um, so your topics, you should have access to all your topics now because they would have opened yesterday. Um, you will notice they'll only have a little bit of information on them, but they'll progressively open as the semester goes Transport. Are you, are you planning to drive or get a car at all? No, I was I got the uh, metro car. Yep. Uh, maybe later I will uh, yep. get my... So if you're going to get a car and you want to park, uh -huh. if you're parking here at Tonsley, uh -huh. um, you need to register for a permit that's free uh -huh. park here and then the car park is still there. Is it a park, park one or two? 
Just call it your pop-up, just two. straight out there where all those cars are. That one's just right through there. But if you're going to park on main campus, you do have to pay for it. Uh -huh. You can pay casually. Uh -huh. um, there's an app you download called Cello Park, uh -huh. and you can just say, yep, I'm here, and yep, I'm done now, I've left. I should have one thing. I in my phone, it's free parking for all of you. my parking session this morning. Um, so you just can pay casually for car parking. If you're going to be driving, and you want to If you're catching the train, obviously you figured out, Flinders Railway Station will take you all the way to main campus, Tonsley will take you here, lots of buses. One thing you might not know is we have our free loop bus, which connects the campuses. Um, <coughs> it has changed this week to different companies, so we now use the Wollonga Charter app, and you can see where those buses are and jump on them and it's free, you just jump on, swipe the car, jump off. It's quite handy if you want to park here or walk here and then you get up to the main campus, you don't have to try and catch a separate bus or go walk all the way to the train station, the blue bus will pick that way up. Scholarships, if you're interested, there is information about scholarships online. There's not that many scholarships for post-grad coursework. Um, but there are a few. Safety, um, if you do, I mean, we're really lucky. I think we have very low rates of issues, but if ever you see anything that makes you uncomfortable, any harassment, either yourself or you witness somebody else, we do encourage you to report it. Um, it's very rare, and particularly in our first grade cohort, everyone's really respectful, um, but we go through it anyway. And I think in general, health students are generally pretty good. Um, but absolutely, there's safety on campus at Flinders, and you can make a report, um, and we, the university can follow up on that and make sure that it gets handled appropriately. Um, health counselling and disability services. So did you know there's a health service on main campus? Yes. Is there international <laughs> health service all covered? I'm like, I don't need to do any of this. I think we can get these guys up here and talk to us. Well, maybe <laughs> Um, disability advisors available, there's lots of self-help resources. They're there, Monday to Friday, 95, um, make appointments, run up to see them. But there's also an after-hours crisis support line as well. <coughs> so there's a phone line and or a text line you can text and get immediate support if you're going through a crisis as well. Um, that said, did International tell you about you know, Australian ambulances and things? So if it's a life-threatening emergency, triple zero is up by number here and all those things. You know, good. Uh, it's on the card. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> wrote it on the card. Beautiful. I will take a moment aside. But triple zero is our emergency number uh -huh. for fire, police, and ambulance. Yeah. Uh, sorry. You know, not that I'm expecting it, but <laughs> if you needed it, <laughs> that's what you call. Um, have you heard about Oasis? Uh -huh. Yeah. So Oasis is really worth a visit. Have you been there yet? Mm. Yeah, you've been there. What did you like about it? Free food. <laughs> yeah, free food. Yeah, free food. You guys love free food, yeah. right? Yeah, free kind of fair. Yeah. Um, there are uh, well being programs. Yep, yeah, really good well being yeah. programs. Gareth Herbert runs some great programs out of there. Um, conversation groups are good. You know, I love the idea of forest walks. I'd love to say I have time for forest walks. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? It would be, yeah. Um, so, you know, there's lots of different things that they're running worth a visit. And yeah. If nothing else, good for free food. <laughs> Thank you, conversation. Um, the e-mental health strategy is also one of Oasis's outputs as well. Um, there's lots of information tools and resources. The student health and wellbeing blog is where to go to get started on some of those sorts of things. And similarly, the Good Vibes experiment. So the Good Vibes um, activity book, I don't know if you've picked up a copy yet. It's a, um, it's a campaign that was co-designed with students about improving student well-being as they throughout the studies. It's a really lovely um, activity. Again, if you want to, you can visit the website and get one, but they're, they're usually scattered around campus. I'm be surprised if there aren't some downstairs at the moment that you can pick up. <coughs> Do you know these people? Yes, yeah. I have family. <laughs> Lovely. 
They have these fucking two eyes, it's so bad. All of them. All of them, oh my goodness, lovely. One month old. So I tend to have a lot to do with Peng. Um, Peng's lovely. She's um, probably our go-to contact here. Um, even clean rehab, but they're really great. All sorts of things, you know. So um, you know, you can go straight to them if you've got a question, or you can come to me, and I don't know, I can go to them or whatever. We'll work it out between us. So lots of services around. We've also got student success and wellbeing advisors on campus who are happy to meet with you as well. We've got prayer rooms, there's the conversation groups, we've got opportunity advisors, there's the pride network. There's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of services available. Sometimes the hardest thing is picking out which service is best for the right need. So um, you can always get email me and say, what do I, I need this done, who do I go to? And I can put you in the right direction. Well, now, the library. Have you been to the library yet? Yeah. Which one? To the Central Library. Central Library? That's okay. Great. So, um, we've got the Central Library up on main campus. There's another library at Sturt, which has a lot of health resources. There is a library here on the ground floor that's very small, but still, if you're looking just for a study room, it can be helpful. Um, but, of course, the majority of the library work now is done online. So they have a lot of information on their student resources website about how to get started, how to find information, um, and lots of training resources. In our core topic, 8019, we'll be going through some of that library information in more detail in week two and three a semester. Um, that's not so relevant to you, but for our students who aren't here on campus, they can send resources out to them. What's also useful though is because you're postgraduate students, if the material that you need is not in the Flinders University Library, if it's something that Flinders University don't subscribe to already, then the document delivery servers will try and get it for you um, as postgrads. They won't do that for undergrads, but they'll do it for postgrads. Um, so that's kind of useful to know as well. So yes, make the most of orientation. It's all week. So, Flow, it sounds like you found your way, have a log in, find your way around. Have you got any questions about Flow yet? Nothing yet? I think we didn't get any difficulty. It should be intuitive, but it's good to know that it is <laughs> and that you're finding it easy to find your way around. But if you do have any issues, um, again, let us know. Help is available. Connect week is next week. And that's another week where there'll be lots of activities, particularly up on main campus. So if you want to go up, check out all the student clubs. Um, there's you know picnic days, fair days, lots and lots of different activities running. Most of them, as I said, will be up on main campus around the beautiful plaza. Um, and you can go and check it out. So a lot of students do love you know finding out about the student clubs that interest them. I don't know if there's a sport you're interested in or if there's a particular um, club to them. There's a lot of sport clubs, there's a lot of special interest clubs. Mm -hmm. um, there's just, I don't know, there's, there's lots. Yeah, you can even start your own club if you think, oh no, the club can get up. You can start it. They, they're really supportive of um, having a, a social culture on So the top tips they suggest are uh, to make sure you're on flow, which you've already done. Keep an eye out for ping, the student newsletter. Um, they suggest that you follow their socials as well. The Flinders University Student Association is there for support. Um, and they're, they're there. The take home message from the university as a whole is lots and lots and lots of supports are there. All right, so let's talk about some clean rehab stuff that's specific to us. So now these are my slides, so I like this better. Um, so in our program, we have the graduate certificate in clean rehab. We have, and then we come through and we have three different master's degrees. We also have, you can exit with a grad dip. So sometimes students will sign up for a master's, but then have a baby and <laughs> change jobs. And, then we, and so they end up coming out with a degree before they get the full master's with a grad diploma. Are you enrolled in master's or grad certs? Masters. Masters. Yeah, you're both in masters, aren't you? Um, so you're both <coughs> enrolled in the general masters of Clean Rehab, yep. which is a two-year full-time equivalent degree. 
We also have, though, our specialist degree in neurophysio and our specialist degree in neuro-occupational therapy. Therefore, our Australian therapies have already got some Australian experience. But the, the topics are all really similar, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, oh, first of all, some key stuff. I told you you're on UK. <laughs> That's the photo you sent me. Lovely. So you've got me, course coordinator, um, Susan Rampling, who teaches um, a few of our topics. She's also our short course coordinator. Uh, Chris Barr and Megan Vandenberg are our staff who do coordinate most of our research topics and do a lot of our research programs. Uh, Nicole Della Perel um, is another occupational therapist, like Kate. And Nicole um, teaches, again, some of our specialist neuro topics. <coughs> Kate does our placement topics, so you'll be meeting her in 8030 next semester. Uh, Morgan, as well, works with Chris and Macon in our research topics. And Jill is a neurophysio who works into our neurophysio topics. So that's our main, the most of us. You don't need to make notes, we're just in there. But it's just nice to know what we look like. We're all pretty friendly and um, that's what we do. Oh, look, I did this. I need to do that. It's spiffy. Just done it. Um, so core topics, everybody, regardless of the degree, will do 8019. You hear me call that 8019 all the time. I topic coordinate 8019. Kate works with me in that topic as well. It is our fundamental topic. Everybody does it. Um, we're going to orientate you to academic writing, you know, how to use the library, what a critical appraisal is, how you um, write a piece, or write an assignment at this postgraduate level. Um, and after that topic, everyone usually feels pretty good about studying at this level again. So to sort of get everybody to speak. We also go through, you know, what is rehabilitation, what does it look like, what makes rehabilitation a unique model of care, um, all those sorts of aspects. Students that are doing the Masters of Clean Rehab, which are you guys, you'll also do as core topics 8020, Tools for Effective Rehabilitation Practice. That's a semester two topic. And I would probably suggest, if you can, within your study program, depending on what electives you want to do, I would suggest doing that semester two 2025, so next year, not this year. And the reason is, is that there's quite a lot of high level concepts in that topic. And students usually find it easier once they've got more experience with study um, and they're a bit more further along. So I would probably, if you can if it will work with your study program, I would leave that till next year. You'll do 8030, which is clean rehab practice, which is that topic with Kate, where you go into an Australian rehab setting and do some um, placement work for a couple of days a week as well as do some of the more practical skills um, and those sorts of things in placement. That's what we call a nine unit topic, which is like a double topic. So it's, um, there's quite a lot in it, but again, students really find that really useful. Have you talked to them about that topic at all yet, really? No. <laughs> so that topic for you will come up semester two this year. Now, one thing to know about that topic is that there are a number of placement requirements that need to happen to make sure you go out into those clinical settings. Can I talk a little bit about that? So, yes. Yes, over here. <laughs> um, so it's things like a vaccination record. So if what we need you to do is to go and see a GP and have some um, vaccinations checked off. So serology for some of them, like hepatitis B, Yes, TV. Um, need to have a police check done. So we have a whole list of just compliance that needs to be done before you can go on placement. And then there's some online modules that you need to work through about hand hygiene and um, the ones. So what I'll do later in this semester is send you some information with the link so that you can get started on that towards the end of this semester so you're ready to go. Um, the other core topics are your research topics. 
So 90344 is clinical research methods, which is looking at sort of some fundamentals of research. And then you get to choose whether you want to do 13 and a half units of research or 18 units of research. Either way, you're going to conduct some research. Often for our international students who aren't currently working clinically, it's something like a systematic review paper. Um, and you're going to plan it, conduct it, write it up over that series of topics. That seems daunting often at the beginning, but we will lead you through it. We've done it lots. It'll be all right. All right, so that's something, you know, a little bit further down the road for you. Um, core topics in the specialist neurophysio and specialist neuro-occupational therapy degrees are a little bit different. Um, you can see I've listed them there, but they'll also do the research topics. And then this is our current list of option topics available as well, which no doubt you've seen. I know it's a lot of topics. One thing to really be aware of is that not these topics don't run every semester, and a lot don't run every year. So if there's a topic that you're desperate to do, you, it's worth looking at now and where it fit within your study plan. Because sometimes students get to next year and say, oh, but I really wanted to do neurological gait. And I say, oh, well, that only runs in the even years. You know, so you have to sort of figure that out. So it's worth looking at what those topics are. We, we talk about your study plan. Um, and I talk a lot a lot of study plans, so we can check them out and see what you're planning. <coughs> but just know that yeah, not every topic runs every semester, so um, that's really critical to, to be thinking about and just planning it a little bit. So you fill up your options the way that it's going to suit you. Participation expectations. Communicate with us, communicate with the other students online. So on the flow sites there are a lot of discussions. And read what your, your fellow students are saying, contribute your own thoughts. Um, have those two-way conversations. You'll learn a lot from each other as well as, of course, from staff. We suggest that each topic, each standard topic, is around about eight to ten hours of work a week. So that's doing the readings, watching the lectures, coming to the tutorials or workshops, doing your assignments, all of that stuff. Now, that's a really rough guideline. Some students will do more like sort of 12 to 15, others might get by on a bit less, um, but that's sort of a bit of a ballpark. <coughs> there are the discussion forums on flows. If you've got sort of questions, you can put your question there. If you're coming to workshops, just come and ask us and you know, we ask and answer questions or more. Um, you can always email your topic coordinator directly as well. So for each topic, we'll have a topic coordinator that you can email directly. Um, Check your university email regularly because that's how you'll get messages from us. Um, it's also important because often, not always, but often if you're using a Gmail or another you know, email um, client, it'll get rejected by the university email. So they won't actually reach us and we won't know about it. So if we're ignoring you, just check which email address you use because um, often it's just that students haven't used their business unit email. That's why it hasn't come through to us. Um, we have our general information flow site as well for more information. I don't know if you've seen that flow site, the general course site. There's a whole list of FAQs and lots of information, so that's worthwhile doing. <coughs> um, this is my lovely photo. This is Bridget, who graduated a year ago now. Yeah, she was a year ago. Two years, maybe. Oh, I didn't meet her, so... Well, maybe two of them, possibly. She's so proud of this photo. She loves this photo. It's nothing else. <laughs> so um, she uh, is one of our students. She's graduated. She's now back in Nigeria and uh, working at their university and running her own research. So that's really exciting. But that's why I use that photo, because it's nice to have photos of our students. Um, so yes, enjoy your studies. Enjoy your time with us. One thing I will say is that Oh, no, I don't have the slide. <laughs> um, we will do a pizza lunch. Usually I put on around week three of semester. And we ask all the students, and my students who are in Adelaide, because there are a lot of continuing students, usually the only new ones that are here today, 
Um, and everyone will join together for a pizza lunch and you get to meet everyone and whatnot. And that's really lovely. I haven't set the date for that yet, but I will. Probably week three. Sorry. Any questions, thoughts, concerns? Yeah. So that's what I'll do there. Yeah. Otherwise, that's great. Yeah. Also, after uh, in second year, I I plan to do these courses. 
Okay. So that will run in semester two. Semester two. That will run in Sorry. semester two. Yeah, I can do it in uh, second year semester two. Mm. No? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Can you check me, please? So this one would then be semester two, 2025, yeah? This one I already. Yep, so this one you're doing it's two, 2024. You're going to do part A with me now, semester one. one. And part B? I mean, semester one, uh, 2025. That would, so part B only runs in semester two. <coughs> so you have to, you could look at doing it here instead of 8020, but I would probably do your research topic then. Okay. So you're probably looking at S2 2025. Spinal cord. So spinal cord is S1, so you could do that S1. Yep. Stroke we have you've already got. Yeah. Uh, so this one would only be semester two, 2024. Only 24. Yes. So this only runs, this is only even years, and this topic would only yeah. odd years. So then run every second year we alternate those two. So then 9010A will be S2 2024. So then these topics run every semester and you can squish these around depending on what you get. So the August twenty seventh Oh, yeah, so if you want to do this oh, topic, yeah. you would have yeah. to be so yeah. 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 um, the days. Uh -huh. Sometimes a So then, what that might look like is uh -huh. the yeah. if I write here? No, have, um, a stroke so on one day. Push on no. no. What else is happening? So, oh, what I would probably suggest is because you want to get the part A done by itself. Fairly soon, oh, so that you can oh, have a oh, plan. So and I would do. I would change these. Oh, yeah, so I would do. So with this topic, uh -huh. we catch up for the first five weeks and sort of prepare for it. So we have a tutorial once a week where we talk about. Um, and then do yeah. the healthcare system here and uh -huh. how to um, so communicate and introduce yourself and what you might see and uh -huh. what you might learn. Uh -huh. Semester 1, 2025, thank you. We also catch up each week and talk uh -huh. about what you're seeing. So as a group. Uh -huh. As a group work. Which is fun. Just, you know, just as like a, a small tutorial. Uh -huh. So what did you observe this week? Uh -huh. How was yes, that so fit? You, uh -huh. How does that fit the evidence? Um, 
or seeing that at the end of the semester, um, screening your studies, pulling out the data, what you've seen on um, uh-huh. so you know, writing it all up, doing all of that work, what you've like seen like a review or something. Yes. <coughs> like like a a it's, it's a lot of work, so a lot of the time students would rather do part D here and perhaps have another letter so this is where it's about looking at so looking at these option topics and where they are and what you'll see. So I mean this could be a good working program for now and you can see how it feels once you've done part A and done your research priority and you have planned your research. Um, but if this is going to be too much, then it might be a case of thinking about one of these three that you can draw and picking a different semester one and then you can uh, All right, so I'm just going to float that out there, we need to um, and we'll just see how you go. We need to print but yeah, the that's the right one of the okay. and we have them by ourselves. No, it's worth yeah. I just think if there's a semester yes. one elective that you're so happy to do, like because you might be moving three of both areas, semester one, it might be a matter of looking so at if you're you know talking to that them would be all right instead. Get generic answers. euro uh-huh. in the semester and then one. That might be an inpatient and then say in day reading. Yeah, so uh-huh. you might if there's one of those topics and you have to do instead uh-huh. of these, you do the same there. And then you know, you might do muscular uh-huh. and part A and go, you uh-huh. know, I don't need to do part B. Something that's different from this two. No, it's yes. yeah. 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 a problem. So in part A, we look at slowly in the filters. Um, so we cover it as well. Maybe the similar case we have. In part A, we do more yeah, that. Yeah, it's fine. And yeah. link it with the literature. Yeah. Yes. So, so you, you might want to do both. Yeah. And they said you complement each yeah. other. There's, there's no. There's only a tiny bit of overlap. Each one just says the introduction of each one is very similar. But part A is completely different. So in that case, it might be TBI. So relevant to you, or it might be that VR, the virtual yeah, reality, or the still the robotics is so relevant uh-huh. to you. Uh-huh. Um, there is a bit of crossover in the um, yeah. neurological gap balance so analysis with the neural sense of technology and the gap and the VR topic. So it might be that you, you're happy to yeah. perhaps drop this yeah. and perhaps <laughs> end the <laughs> <laughs> So even though it's not a new topic, a lot of that is because it's the place that two days a week. Yeah, yeah. Not because we're not going to be able to gather a lot of information. Oh, it's fine. Put it in semester one. I'm not very sorry. But how many? You don't have to make these decisions yet. I will. But you can think about it, yeah, and just think about how it's going to work in your. So it's just nice to look at it now. You know what you might want to be thinking about. But this is absolutely fine. Yes, absolutely. Yes, four choices. And uh, yeah, but I would change these. So you're doing your research proposal there, and you're doing. And this if you want to do the gate topic, that's the only time you can do that. Is that only for the patient? Is for some symptoms, right? Some process are. Oh, that's a header. Question. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at this subject. And possibly yeah, this one. This one. Yeah. That's it. So oh, we can read the studies that headhunts are. Um, I help out a little bit with that one. Okay. There's another yeah. one. You want to do more than what's allowed in the study plan? Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it's the yes. course. Yeah. So we do have some of these courses yeah. um, that we run throughout the year. Sometimes they're only they're much smaller version. Yeah. There's no assessments, but we do run them as short courses. So we currently have did you read Euro as a short course? We have, um, we do have stroke as a short course. So stroke one, yes. We do have um, a course that incorporates some so of muscles a little bit, but also some of the stroke and some of some other things. So you want to do in the future. Um, uh-huh. So we also yeah. do um, as well. It's kind of helpful when I yeah as a short course. Which has the elements of each of them. Um, I'm not too sure. That's really a question. You've got other okay. questions? I'm hearing. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's all right. We're allowed. Research and something else. That's all right. <laughs> I, think we've both, I think we've sort of reviewed the study plan out. We've mapped them out for two years. Excellent. They're all sorted. Excellent. So, 
It is just knowing those topics which run semester mm -hmm. one, semester two, mm -hmm. odd years, even years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole bit.
which the link then takes you to this yeah. so I think page. What we might do is send you up the hill to so talk uh -huh. to and then the launch advisor uh -huh. about the best pathway into. So this so bit here uh -huh. is actually being um, simplified. So for the for the moment, you don't what's need to do those three um, ones. You just need to do the police check. Because what's your undergraduate degree? Then the what top one, the fitness uh, placement, uh, is a declaration. Uh, and it's just uh, uh, those uh, tops are just declarations. Uh, just on the floor. The police check lasts for we three years, but you just need to do that one here. Medicine, okay. Medicine. okay. Medicine. Then Medicine. Therapy. Medicine. Therapy. Medicine. the ter yeah. tuberculosis okay. screen needs to be done. So when you apply, so you haven't applied directly to physio, yeah. but it's really yeah. easier to get into um, this course. Yeah. And you'll bring so your balance up, so just need to have the flu bags, which is from so mid-March on, when they become a dialectal one. Yeah. 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 yeah, so when, All right. so yeah, I think usually there's what we should do is sit down with the doctor and you can go through the referrals of the doctor and the master's of the health service there. Because they're quite specific and it's quite easy to treat. COVID bags, students are required to, you had a bunch of Then there's a deep hole you just need to sign on. You do need to do CPR training, so just look into that. Um, the hand hygiene and the infection control are online modules, so it's just the CPR training that you need to look into. The place is full. The enrollment place? No, not the enrollment place, it's the immunisation course. Yes, yeah, so the, the degree is full. So yeah, yeah. <coughs> but you still need to go to the and then take it to the doctor around with any records that you've got. So you've got to get the transcripts. Yeah. So I'll just come back to that. So then, no, that's fine. So what? So it'd probably be better to get <coughs> onto this thing and come later. Because then if you don't have the vaccinations, the doctor will be able to take on. No, there's the the no biopropic. Oh, that's, that's yes, one. okay, that is all yeah. <laughs> over. That is all over. It's because to be given over the, a few months. The two yeah. reason one is the So that one you might need to pay for. Another one is I really am interested with some These of the things. These hot drugs, hot drugs, static. It's a vaccination, it's a chicken pox. Like I said, oh, yeah. the morning I talked yeah. to the joint supporters, don't need the hex at all because you're not going that. to an indigenous no, community. No, yes, but you it's you just the yes, other ones. Are. That you can't, you don't have. Yeah, but so, uh, you know, I just yeah, need to bring that form and go to the doctor. Okay, so what do you think? I've been out all my tests, see if you've got the immunity to anything. If not, then I'm stuck with the parents for vaccinations. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And those ones don't run out. Yes, yeah. that and pretty much the two that you need to get onto, yeah. and then and you can just plan for your CPR in the middle of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. That's that really link have, is okay, but just with the, and it's just the police check. Yeah, no, 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 no but it's, it's oh, still long. It's one day a week of work, but you've only got a one day intensive, and just the police check, not the working with children and the... Maybe it's not as I've been to have those three now, but they just changed it. Once you've got all of that, then there's your information on how to upload it onto the university system. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. But you've got my email, so any time that you're working through this, you can see that. Okay. Excellent.
So I can you can drop uh, one of these. Yeah. So you can't drop three pads. Mm -hmm. You need to keep I would yeah, just keep eight oh one nine. Of course. And I would suggest keeping nine and three four to set yourself up for your research later. Uh -huh. So got one of these, so exercise, uh -huh. musculoskeletal stroke, uh -huh. you need to drop and think about picking up next year if you're still with us. Um, you know, neuro conditions, or do muscular skeletal you know, clinic uh, 
um, it'll do a range of different places and different areas, but it's designed to get them to that baseline competency level. So our physiotherapy competency standards are really clear in Australia. These are the minimum skills which anybody who can register as a physio should have. And they will Our Kim Rehab program is different in that it's designed to take people who've already got a degree. And as I said, we will meet, when we do our kids today, you'll meet a lot of our assistant students and we've got doctors and nurses and physios and OTs and a range of different people who've usually um, already got some clinical experience, they've been working for a couple of years, and they really want to go further and figure out how to become better at the process of rehabilitation. So it's about looking specifically at what, what are some of these fundamental areas like stroke, like spinal cord, like musculoskeletal, or um, like brain injury, and how do we rehabilitate in those particular areas in best evidence-based what does best practice in acute stroke rehab look like? What does best practice in chronic stroke rehab look like? Um, you know, what, what is it that's unique about dementia that we need to take into consideration when we're thinking about rehabilitation and the well-being of people with dementia? So it really sort of deep dives into some of those areas in much more depth than you would do in that physio degree where you're, learning, you're busy learning the basics, so to speak, um, and proving that you're competent in understanding, you know, the fundamentals of electrotherapy and looking at the fundamentals of, you know, um, all, all sorts of things, you know, manual skills, um, and you know, we, we're not we're not going to be here to teach you how to massage somebody or how to do, yeah. you know, manual therapy because that's not specific to rehab. So, but in the physio degree, we'll be certainly looking at some of those. It's specific to physiotherapy, but that's probably more generalist across a range of different health conditions. Uh, and for rehab, it's uh, um, a huge area, a separate layer for different uh, parts, will, which will involve the rehab, and then you can maybe in the future focus on one part to give a different research deeper understanding of what rehabilitation means. So we've got a number of rehabilitation <coughs> centres where people will, you know, if they need um, rehabilitation, might go and be an inpatient, get inpatient rehab. Mm -hmm. They might do day rehab where they attend your rehab service, you know, every day, three days a week, whatever. We've also got rehabilitation settings where people might rehabilitate, um, you know, by going to visit somebody for an hour a week. You know, they could be in a, a an athlete who's rehabilitating after a knee replacement or a knee reconstruction and you know having some sort of regular sessions there. So there's a range of different rehabilitation settings and services. Um, the big thing that I think I want to make sure that you know about our degree is okay. that um, it won't lead to a qualification that will allow you to register as a health professional in Australia. So health professionals in Australia are all registered. So physiotherapists are registered. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the government says, yes, well, you've done a degree which we know means that you've met the standards for physiotherapy. Mm -hmm. You know, you've done a degree in nursing, we know that you meet the standard for nurses, yeah. you meet the standard for, you know, so all the professions have that degree and then they need to be registered. Mm -hmm. And so our degree is, um, we help people further and, you know, how to get deeper in that understanding. But if you can't go to the registration people say, well, I've got a degree in rehabilitation now. My, you know, there's no real rehabilitationist um, profession uh -huh. to uh -huh. register. Yeah. That said, if you've got an existing degree like physiotherapy, uh -huh. um, if there is a process you can go through to become a registered, you know, in Australia, uh -huh. you probably looked into it already. Yes. Yeah. It's quite detailed. There's a number of exams yeah. and things to prove that you meet Australian standards. Uh -huh. um, so try to stop it, my then uh, they will give me dream surgery, then I have to sit pretty exam, then then I'll get pretty. Have you started that? Uh, no, I, I plan to start. It's a lot of work, but yeah. it's good. Um, and yeah, you know, it's just that process of yeah. getting that work. It does take time and it's not cheap. Yeah. 
but yeah, it's we had a weird look. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's expensive, but um, but it just shows you can't stand in yeah. Australia, and then you can be registered. Not all of our students who come from MPC do that. They're like, no, I'm happy knowing that I have physio in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. I was thinking, and I'm like, oh, but is it? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. So you know, it's like, small company at all in India. I know, but I know, and I'm like, and we get students from the pool as well, or we yeah. get students from yeah. So we get yeah. I don't want to get confused and accidentally <laughs> insult anyone. So you know, you might be happy going. I'm a normal physio, Sri Lanka. I'm happy with that. I don't need to get registered in Australia. I'm going to do this course and then take my rehab knowledge back to Sri Lanka, and that's fine. With a lot of students who do that, um, so they never bother doing the training and registration here in Australia because that's not their goal. They want to upskill in rehab, and then they go back and, like um, I showed you Bridget yeah. earlier, she's not back. She's now teaching in Nigeria with a specialist knowledge, and she didn't register in Australia or go through that process. So a bit of a long story, but I'm probably be getting more confused than ever. Okay, and the also one I'm wondering is uh, um, after this program, yes, if you study and uh, what uh, if you do after this program, what you can do, like um, a doctor or a therapist or a researcher. So in, a, so in Australia, yeah. so in <coughs> Australia, as I said, this won't lead to a registration as a healthcare professional. Um, you certainly could look at perhaps doing some work in research that doesn't require a registered profession. Uh -huh. um, you could, um, there's, there's certainly some avenues that are available there, but it won't, you can't then work as a physio or work as a doctor or work as any of those things because you don't have that underlying degree and that recognition. So even if Raku was to work as a physio, after this degree, if you wanted to work as a physio, you still would have to go through that process yeah, yeah, yeah. of getting registered yeah. with. However, I have to get registration. <laughs> that's right, so yeah. that registration is really yeah. important. That's yeah. separate to us, yeah. um, but it's, yeah, it's still a useful thing. So it won't give you a qualification that you can then use to work in our health system, um, unfortunately. That that's, that the, that's not the purpose of our degree. It's really yeah. people advance skills in in rehab. Uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, it, what is a rehab counselor? A rehabilitation counselor. Yeah. So that's a unique. Um, that's a separate profession. And a rehabilitation counselor in um, in Australia is a profession which works with people to help them. Um, basically look at ways in which they can um, return to work and return to the activities that they want to do. It's usually um, heavily involved with looking at some of the compensation schemes. So rehabilitation counsellors in Australia typically will work with people who've had a workplace injury um, and help them navigate those systems and admin in order to get back to work. Uh, it's been <coughs> it's been for counsellors most Jerry's work is about to, uh, how to say, it's uh, to manage the national manager is to uh, manage their uh, quality or manage their ability if they can go back to work or something like that or mm, give some advice or help to, to make sure they can. Yeah, so rehabilitation counsellor, let me see if I can find a quick, um, de their definition, because I don't want to. <coughs> Is this our program will be involved this area or something? Do we, we, we don't, this is not looking at rehabilitation counselling, because uh -huh. it's not so much looking at actual health care. Rehabilitation counsellors are really giving that advice on how to manage the systems to get um, to get back to um, independence and counselling. So um, the definition that they give, yeah. So rehabilitation counsellors will also be looking at um, you know have the finances involved. You know how do we make sure that you're financially strong? How do we make sure that you've got the social networks that you need? 
um, how do we um, help you, you know, understand what your next career might look like, um, how do we understand, you know, what you might need um, to support your families. It's not so much healthcare related. Um, so most of it, like, uh, <coughs> uh, nearly about uh, um, finance management, something like that. They're called resource management, is a, t is a phrase that sometimes gets used. So it's not just the finance, I mean, finance is an easy one uh, to understand, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it's about uh, managing the resources that are available. Uh -huh. It's almost, um, you know, sometimes that role will get be undertaken in uh -huh. by a social worker. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. That's that sort of more, um, you know, looking at it, it's a really important work. But it's, uh -huh. it's not so much healthcare as uh -huh. in, you know, like that a little bit. Yeah. So this <coughs> program, when you finish, and uh, it's more likely you can work in a uh, research department or something. It might be that you could do research. You can work as a rehabilitation manager. There are some certainly administrative yeah. jobs that don't need registration. Uh -huh. So looking at working in healthcare in administration or working in healthcare management, that those sorts of jobs may um, yeah, are <coughs> around. Um, but it's not. It, unfortunately, there's nothing you, can, you can't say. Yes, I'm a, a rehabilitation therapist yeah. um, without a registered degree. It's really complicated. I know it's not easy yeah, to, to so understand. Yeah. Can you to me to understand the the, the the system or something for me? So it, you won't be a doctor or you won't be a therapist. No. After that, no. so it means you can't work in a clinic or you can't work uh, in a hospital. Not without an existing undergraduate degree. So I'm actually interested, to, I'll, be, I'll be following up a little bit more about your enrollment uh -huh. and about your undergraduate degree and that it allowed you to enroll in our degree because usually I don't think we would have accepted people from your, from your background, but I, it may be. I'll, I'll look into it a little bit more and understand a little bit more about what your undergraduate degree is in and that will help me understand um, going forwards. But it's if you're looking at doing this as a pathway into the physio program, then I think we need to set you up for a meeting with people who are admitting into the physio program and establish the best pathway forward for you. Stuff you've already covered to uh -huh. a point, but we will make sure that everybody yeah. is on the same page yeah. with that. So that's the one you have to do. Mm -hmm. And what about the rehab masses? So this is looking at some basic research skills. So 903 uh -huh. It will be helpful for the assignment or make uh, to when you write the essay or something like that. Mm -hmm. And helpful for you to read and understand research. Okay. So you'll be reading research papers and okay. it's really useful to understand the research methods. You know, what is qualitative research, what is quantitative research, mm -hmm. there's some information about statistics, you know, can you explain a p-value, can you talk about, you know, what's an appropriate test if you're comparing within groups or between groups or, you know, so there's lots of that sort of stuff. Again, which some people have a really good grasp on because their undergraduate degrees come really well, uh -huh. other people not so much, and then we can the uh -huh. So it's a really good one again to get those foundational skills in uh, reading yeah. and understanding research. Yeah, and also for the implementation. Yeah, so you can't do that until you've done nine hundred three four. Uh, so you, you can't do so that yet. So this 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 three topic, the A B C the three yeah. topic, we I I should 
put it on the semester two or maybe semester two? Yeah, so with these research topics, you mm -hmm. have to do part A before you do part B. Oh, yeah. All right, but you could do, if you don't have space for part A in semester two this year, you could do that in semester one, uh -huh. and then do both of these in semester two. Uh -huh. Or you could do, um, or yeah, for instance, you could do this in semester one, or semester two this year, and then you could do these at any point next year. Yeah. The difference between doing the ABC, uh -huh. the 9000 A, 9000 B, 9000 C, uh -huh. versus doing 9010 A, B, C, and D, is one of the larger research components. So if you were interested in going on to do a PhD mm -hmm. or to do any further research, mm -hmm. then if you do the larger research component, which is 9010 9, A to D, mm -hmm. then it's one pathway to make you, you would have done enough research to be eligible to apply. That's why you're selecting that. Yeah, that's usually the biggest yes. difference for people. Yeah. That's something that interests you. Yeah, yeah great. So in our, our country, there's less research <laughs> well, We know we need so yeah. much more evidence-based yeah. research, particularly mm -hmm. in countries outside of, yeah, we know. We are having uh, traditional uh, practice method. We yeah. don't have evidence-based yep. good diagnosis yeah. and uh, assessment method. Yeah, because uh, we are developing and we don't. Yeah, but we are it, and yeah. it's it, well, we, need, we need research there. So the World Health Organization is incredibly keen on expanding research into these countries. And um, yeah, so doing the larger research is a great yeah. option um, if that's something that interests you in the future. But if you're, if you're not, I'm a clinical person, I want to work with people, um, I mean, not to say that research isn't working with people, yeah. but you know, I'm not so much interested in research, then doing the smaller research stream will give you more clinical topics. So for semester one, uh -huh. do this one, uh -huh. do this one, uh -huh. and then pick two others that you like. So you could do, if you like, you said last first a little, you can uh -huh. do that with me if you like. Okay. Um, what were the other two you had? And then the two I have the stroke rehab and the exercise. Uh, okay. Exercise. Yeah. So yeah, pick, one. pick one of those. Probably, uh -huh. you know what, I would do stroke. Stroke. Do stroke with Jill. You can do exercise in next year if you want. Um, uh -huh. Do stroke with Jill. She's great. Uh -huh. And it will give you another voice. Because otherwise you do three to pick uh, for the stroke, for the stroke is so uh, one day the intensive the clinical practice. So and one day intensive is not uh -huh. actually in clinic. It's so like a one day of presentations uh -huh. or whatever. It's just jammed into one day, so that our students around Australia uh -huh. can just take a day off from uh -huh. their normal work uh -huh. and just come uh -huh. in online uh -huh. and be at that day of education. Uh -huh. But also for internally enrolled students, which you will be as an international student, uh -huh. there's also fortnightly workshops which you will be running as well. So you can talk to Jill and write a class every fortnight. Fortnight. Uh, it means every two weeks every I two have, weeks. A, I have a workshop. Yeah. Uh, workshop. And right now Jill has a clash with stroke. Yeah, so what your timetable will look like. Let's look it up and mm -hmm. see exactly where it all is. So <coughs> this one is with Seminar. Yeah, they're calling it a seminar. Okay. Yeah, the seminar is uh, 80-15 of this one. So oh, yeah. if I if I drop this one, that that will be fine. That'll be fine. That that will be. Then you'll be back. You won't be overloaded yeah, anymore. That, 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 it, it's not just the not overload. It's the time will be can be management won't be clashed because the workshop. Of the, oh, of the stroke, yeah. But that's only the yeah. same time with no. the exercise. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. If you do have any clashes like that, because mm -hmm. we're a small team, if it's a one day intensive, uh -huh. you just say to me, hey, look, I won't be at exercise that day because I'm going to the stroke intensive. Uh -huh. And I'd say, no worries, you need, that's fine, I know where you'll be, <laughs> and it won't be a problem. Oh, all right. All right, so, so don't okay. panic if there are any of those little sort of one day clashes, that's fine. Uh -huh. But yes, so the, the 8033, which is the stroke topic, there's uh -huh. the one day intensive workshop on the 28th of March, uh -huh. which is all day. And then uh -huh. Thursday on every fortnight or every two weeks, yeah. there's um, from th three to five, actually in this very room, yeah. um, Jill will be yeah. running a session. I want to 
this and the joke, this, this two coupons and this two option. Grateful. Yep, and that's so I, 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 I only condemn this. That's right, you can do next year. You can think about the thing that up next year. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I just said yeah. to review the same thing. It'll be over there next year. Okay, all right. okay, all right. So I, I, I will go back to change my yes. you know, enrollment to, uh, to, to drop one, maybe to the next year, and we keep this four for this year. And next uh, semester two, uh, we have the uh, 14 days the placement, right? Uh, with Kate. Yeah, so yeah. in two days, two days, two days a week. Yeah. And uh, other times we have go to the college, have the, some the seminar, or maybe yeah, you know the classes and things. Yeah. All right, okay. So next semester is the biggest semester. Yeah, maybe. The, the Kate's, Kate's topic, where you've uh -huh. got both that placement, uh -huh. um, that's what we call a nine year topic. So it's like a double topic. Yeah. So you'll do Kate's topic, and then you'll only do two others. To, to, to others, yeah. Uh, it means I overload again. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so this, this, again. Is a, this is a double topic for two years. Yeah. So we, yeah, you can only do 8030 uh -huh. and then do two others. So you're only going to do three. If one of them is 8030. Yeah, what about this one? Two is for effective yeah. rehab practice. What about this one? So this is the one that I suggested to review as well. I would leave. Uh -huh. For next year? 2025. If this yeah. is one of the more challenging, it's about management in rehab. Oh, um, it's so it's about service. And it's about service oh. models and it's quite a high level topic, 802 tools for effective practice. Oh. Um, yeah. It's much, I won't say it's easy, but it's much easier for students when they're a bit further along in their degree and you've got oh. more experience and everything else. Oh. So if possible, I would leave that uh -huh. until 2025. And uh, also, this is for semester two topic, semester two course. Yeah, this is for semester two. So I only choose this one for the pure course. Yep. And uh, choose another two Ooh, options. Sorry, yes, two, two options. options. Two options. Yes. Okay. And also, uh, this one is for the semester two. Sure. And also, I'm not sure what's the virtual. Oh, okay. So the virtual reality yeah. will only be, won't be running in, it only runs every um, semester two. It runs semester two, but it also only runs in our uh, odd years. So this won't run again until 25. Uh -huh. This one is only 2024 or 26, etc. Oh, so I need enrolled for semester two. Yeah. So it's that's right. And then you can do that next year. Do this next year. Yeah. And also I can pick this for semester two and pick this B yeah. for semester two. And then you do case topic and you're done. I'm done. And uh, for the next 2025, I choose. You'll be doing some of your research, research. And, and the rest of your option topics. And you're looking at doing other two and later on this one. And also I, I, I remember there have some. More options I can choose for the second year. And for the pure course, only have three in year two. Option topics? I have four option topics I can choose for year it, two. It will depend a little bit about when you do your research topics. So these research topics you can do mm -hmm. um, any semester. So what I would be looking at, I'm going to talk about this one. Yep, just one so note. Have you got a blank piece of paper? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, just wrote a lot. <laughs> so, what I would do if I were mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. so semester one, mm -hmm. semester two, semester one, semester two. Mm -hmm. So, semester one, you're going to do 8019, yeah, because that's an interest. You also have going to do 9034. And you want to do musculoskeletal, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the decision. And also the stroke. And also stroke, that's right. Yeah. So. Then, so
semester two. <coughs> and you've been in the practice with Kate. That's right. You have to mm -hmm. do that, get that out of the way. Mm -hmm. And that's a double topic. Right, so if you see it sits here like this. Uh -huh. yeah. Then I would suggest we do we do eight oh two oh in twenty twenty five once you've got some more experience. Mm -hmm. To do the now, at the moment, and you don't have to commit to this decision now, but are you thinking to do the smaller research or the larger research? Oh, what's the difference? The main difference, one, you do a smaller project, one, you do a larger project, but the main difference is that if you do the bigger research, is that oh. it's a, it makes you eligible to apply for a PhD in your future if you want to. All right. Uh, it, this will be extend my study. You can still do it within the two-year program, but it will mean one less option to So the topic uh, I choose is by myself or I need to talk with somebody so to stop me because it's in, Yeah, you can you start to talk about it in 9034, then already starts to talk to you about what's coming up next. Mm -hmm. In 9000A or 9010A, it's the same topic, they all, all the students go together and they but it's basically part A. Uh -huh. You write your research proposal and come up with what the you know what the project is. And in part A, we'll allocate you a research supervisor that you work one on one with. So I supervise a number of students, um, but you know most of the academics will supervise students doing these research projects. So, uh, so nine thousand A, you need to give a proposal about your further topic. Yeah. What is it that you want to do in part B, C, or B, C, and D? You know, uh, are you going to do a systematic review looking at the effect of mm -hmm. a particular exercise mm -hmm. um, in postpartum or are you going to be looking at you know whatever your topic is you can define oh, it okay. we have students do so many different projects they're so <laughs> broad <laughs> yeah um yeah. but what we would do is then look at well who's got expertise in that field mm -hmm. so what's an academic who's done you know that type of research or done research in that mm -hmm. in that way and we would hook you up with that supervisor who would then uh -huh. guide you uh -huh. to conduct and run that your research. If, if nobody do this area, I, I give the proposal, what will happen? Nobody? Yeah. You would find somebody. Oh, <laughs> that's really perfect. Look, you know, sometimes, to be honest, it, uh -huh. we, we might not have somebody who's an absolute expert yeah, in yeah, yeah. that tiny niche field. Uh -huh. But yeah. we might know somebody who's, but it's say you're looking at doing this. this. Well, let's say you're looking at doing a survey design, uh -huh. or we might have somebody who's not done survey work in that field, but they're really great at doing surveys uh -huh. in the community. Okay. Or we might have somebody who's, um, you know, really good uh -huh. <coughs> at doing systematic reviews. Or mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, I'm just going to grab some water. <coughs> so <coughs> we usually find somebody. So what I might suggest then mm -hmm. is that you do 
9010A or 9000A um, in semester two, so that you can mm -hmm. plan that proposal. And then you'll need one more topic for there. Mm -hmm. So these topics are undertaken by a number of different postgrad students in a number of courses across our degree. Mm -hmm. So it's not just clean rehab, there'll be healthcare, there'll be disability, mm -hmm. there'll be um, a number of different um, professions in that one. Mm -hmm. So there was a year two, I can choose five options? Well, it depends. So usually, <coughs> by, by pushing, I don't write the study plan, but they uh -huh. don't have that one. Uh -huh. I would push this topic here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then I bring this topic down there. Oh yeah, okay. And it just evens it out. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. So then I would do part B there, mm -hmm. and then you can choose where you put C and D. Mm -hmm. I would, if you're doing D, I'd probably put it here. Um, it depends a little bit on what option topics that you want to do. Just just make sure this is A B C. Not yeah, so this is B. this is the one that A B C. Okay. Uh, and usually on the opposite side, people print the one that's got A and D. So it depends on which pathway that you choose to go. Yeah. 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 Y
approximately. Uh -huh. you know, where it depends. All oh, right. And you'll see by the time you get there, every <coughs> project's different. Uh -huh. You know, if it's a qualitative project, which has lots of quotes, it might need to be longer. If it's a really succinct project, that's mm -hmm. you know, it might be shorter. But that's a bit of a yeah. And uh, it means this one you don't maybe uh, maybe you don't need a regard, final regard in this one. And this one you need to have a final regard to show the. Uh, they will all end them. Both will be finished papers by the time you're finished. So by the time you've done all of it, uh -huh. it's a finished paper. It's a proper yeah, publishable paper with results. Both of it off. Yeah. So you'll have uh, your introduction, your okay. methods, your results, and your discussion. All right. okay. And yeah. abstract. Yeah. Okay. And all your references. <laughs> and all your figures and tables yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, we're talking about this is at the end of your two years. Uh huh. All right, and you see, you, okay. most students are not thinking about this in you know, over the <laughs> semester. All right, you're, you're really getting ahead of yourself. Uh -huh. All right, so for the minute, I would be thinking about which option topics. Mm -hmm. So you get to do, you know, for a semester, mm -hmm. except this will be one and two. Mm -hmm. And two and one. So. you get to pick, you know, what you want each of your topics to be in each semester. <coughs> so here, for instance, you might want to do... And, uh, and this has only have C. If uh, I choose the A to D and the C to D, where I should... So then, then you can do C... I, you, you would probably, depending on what you want to do, you could shift C to here uh -huh. and do part D here, uh -huh. or you could do C and you could do D here. So there, if I put the C here, I can you have two, two yep. options, and if I leave the C and D here, I only have one. That's right. Okay. So that's where it's often working out your options, and then you can shift C mm -hmm. to where it fits to work best for your options. Okay, I got it. Just give me a clear picture. I know <laughs> there's a lot to think yeah, about. I never do that before, so that makes me so confused. You know, I prepared the enrollment after I got my offer. I I made the breast dog to consider to think about how what course I need, what option I need to choose, and uh, what which topic I like, interest uh, that I want to work more in this area. It's a lot of about three months. <laughs> it's a lot to think about. <laughs> so now start with, <laughs> start with is organizing your enrollment for this semester. Yeah, and, okay. I would, and I would enroll for the whole year yeah, now. Right. As you have done, but get your yeah. get your enrollment sorted for this year. Yeah, okay. <coughs> but we can we can change it around. So if you get you know through semester one and you go, oh actually no I want to do I would really like part A, I want to do part B straight away in semester two. Then we can switch it out. You know, there's a bit of, there is some flexibility still, but I like to have it at least planned and mapped, so you have that idea of where you're going. And so, as I said, we don't run into those issues where people go, "Oh, but I really wanted to do neurological play," and I said, "Oh, but I only ran, you missed it." Uh huh. You know. All right, got it. And uh, another question: um, is, um, is that possible? Uh, I overload the units, but I keep. 18 units for each semester, and the overload one, I won't take any assignment. It means I maybe fail the course, but I just uh, attend to the course, attend to the workshop, and do the everything. People often want to do that, particularly when they start. <laughs> we, we're pretty firm on saying uh -huh. no, because uh -huh. it is overwhelming. Uh -huh. And it uh -huh. is, this is a lot of work. It's mm -hmm. a lot of work as it is. And we don't want to set you up to fail, and we don't want to set you up to not do well with other topics because you're trying to cover everything all at once. Uh -huh. It's just too much. Uh -huh. So the okay. answer is it's a pretty firm yeah. no. Okay. Not because we're mean and nasty, but because we really know it's in your best interest to just mm -hmm. focus on the lots of work. But then you need time to go and you know go visit the koalas and go do other things and hang out mm -hmm. at the beach and. Mm -hmm. You know, you keep them more than just study. Okay. Yeah, I think I got it. Yeah. yeah. So no. Okay. Put my mum hat on. No. <laughs> I understand. All right. I, yeah, I clear it. Cool. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, just make make me.
there are about the picture. There's a lot of information yeah, for the and there's a lot to, yeah, yeah. to get through. So, I mean, we'll see, I don't think, I'm ex we'll see if um, the other visas come through this year, mm -hmm. I think for this semester. Okay. So it might be that we're a fairly small group in class, mm -hmm. but you'll see if there'll be you know, many more students online. Okay, so uh, next Monday we have the class here. Yes. Right? Yeah, so, in this room. Is that having a look at where you are? I put it here in my diary. Yeah, I <laughs> I check, uh, yeah, I said in, in tongues, like, Great. in this room, and it means uh, uh, that they only uh, will go with me. Well, there are many students. So, will have other students? Oh, no. no, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So look, what I would have to do is yeah. I'll have to see. Um, so you're talking about high school school? Were you talking about eight oh one nine? Which topic were we looking at? Must school school is Monday, I think. And eight oh one nine is Tuesday. Maybe two. I've got it in my diary. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's uh, Monday, ten to five. Must school school? Yeah. Oh no, 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 nine to eleven. Nine to eleven. Okay, so we've got Muscular School on Monday at 12. 12 to 2. Yep, yeah. and that's in room 104. Muscular School, yeah. Did you enter Muscular School? No, this one. This one. This one. Monday. 12 to 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is in room 104. Oh, this is a Tuesday. Oh, 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 my God. Yeah. And this room is Monday. 12 to So this is 108. 104 uh -huh. is further around that way for Muscular School, but it's on this level. Oh, it's 108. You yeah. one Just one eight. One one way. Way. Oh, oh, maybe they maybe they moved me and nobody told me. Oh, really? I'll double check. Okay. Mm, on the timetable, it's showed the one way. I'll, I'll, I'll triple check because I put yeah. all of these in late last year and maybe they changed. Okay, and uh, uh, for this course, do we have the reading list? Reading list. Reading list. Reading list. Or reading list. Yeah. I'll talk you through readings when we talk in the topic. So we want to get earlier. Yeah. Okay. You just do it week by week. <laughs> so you don't panic and you know yeah. do too much. Yeah, okay. <coughs> and we can check on flow about this topic. Do we have the textbook? We can So you'll find uh -huh. we have none of our topics from Germany have textbooks. I, I thought you have the she had, oh, she might have a textbook. Yeah, I have two, I think. I oh, checked she, she, might, she might have put textbooks on there. Yeah, in general, we tend not to have textbooks because things move so fast. Uh -huh. And to stay on top of the evidence base for current practice, we can usually use what we need for journals and uh, okay. for current um, okay, I got it. publications. Yeah. But you can certainly talk to her about that. Uh, oh, they have shifted it. Oh, if you told me, I would have been in the wrong room. So we're going to wait on Monday. <laughs> yeah. They moved that. That was that was not in one way before, but I will change it in my diary. Um, the, yeah, we will we will give you the readings and we will show you how to find them, and it will all be it will all be okay. Uh, you know, in China, we will go to the reading list before the semester start. Yep. Maybe before. Two or three weeks ago, to go at the reading list, and so then we can prepare. We do two, particularly for our undergrads, yeah. um, but we find in postgrad <coughs> that you know we can we can just chill a bit more uh, and yeah, just take yeah. it a little bit more step by step. And then uh -huh. what you will learn is you will learn the skills on how to go and find your own literature that's useful and relevant to you. So. Uh -huh. You'll probably notice in a lot of the assignments, for instance, mm -hmm. that we let you choose an area that interests you. Yeah. Now, write your own case study yeah. and you write in your research plan. Yeah. So it's more flexible. It. Lots more flexible. Yeah. Because we know that everyone's got their own interests, they've got their own yeah. background, you know, you might have people you know, in one class who work in very different settings. So it lets you go and explore areas that are interesting and relevant to you. Because in China, the timetable of the schedule is uh, done already before the semester starts. Yeah. So the 
so the possibility that they do not have much choice, that they can do, they can choose, that they just follow the schedule to, to study, study, study. And so you're doing go. something like the Masters of Physio degree, yeah, it's yeah. absolutely regimented, there's no option, everyone does this, everyone does that, you know, anyway. But this is designed to degree, yeah. it's a specialist degree to give you uh -huh. um, experience in the areas that you want to meet. All done. So I will see you on Monday. Okay. And then I'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a nice campus though. Yeah. I hope you've had a chance to have a look around and yeah. to see. I, I, I went to Tomsley two days ago yep. to see around oh, and nice. from the growth law to the, to the top. top down yeah. Down. <laughs> it is a lovely space, but very yeah. And it's it's amazing. It's more, you know, technology. <laughs> it is. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of work in digital health. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's it's great to have all the technologies yeah. available to us. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome.